I went online and I was browsing, doing my thing as I do, checking the fucking socials. And I stumbled on the lovely Narcissus um, post on their Instagram stories. And the post that Narcissus posted was, you know, Narcissus is on their way to a DJ gig, having fun, got the nice grills on, got the nice filter on, feeling good, little scarf around the neck, you know, feeling yourself, you know, pre-gig fucking vibes. I haven't felt that in a long time because I haven't been booked in a long time, which is fucking making my head spin, but I'm going to have to fucking book a club somewhere and just get myself to play and just like make it look like it's a night with loads of DJs, but it's actually me, haha <laughs> trick, but... Yeah, I know how that felt, right? I, I remember that feeling. So the pre-gig feeling, you're feeling yourself, you're feeling a buzz, you're in the backseat of an Uber, you're listening maybe to some tunes to get you in a mood. Me personally, pre-gigs, I don't like to play any real music. I like just to kind of chill and be quiet and kind of relax. And I've also got a rule. If I'm in an Uber, I never ask the fucking Uber driver, hey, do you have a fucking Bluetooth thing? Never. I think that's really rude. I also think it's kind of annoying to be in a car with somebody and then have them fucking play their shitty music while you're trying to drive them somewhere. It's fucking shit. I'd rather put on my own headphones and listen to my own things. If they want to speak to me, I can take it off quickly, blah, blah, blah. But I'm not going to fucking impose myself on this guy's fucking car. I'm doing enough. Or I'm doing a lot already by imposing my sweaty fucking ball sacks on their fucking chair. The last thing I need to do is fucking and abuse them and ear rape them with my fucking music so i'm not going to do that cool whatever um now just having a good time sitting in the fucking back of the uber ready to go to the gig boom ba 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 boom ba ba and they put this caption at the bottom of their picture that made me wonder what the fuck is going on has something changed in dj world so the person put the following it unfortunately bears repeating my guest list for amina berlin today is full right so the reason why I think this is really interesting is because clearly for me, this is a little bit of a signal. This kind of is, I think, even maybe it's maybe it's something that Narcissus didn't mean, but I think this encourages bad behavior. But I also think this is what they want. I think there's been a shift. So the shift has happened lately is I think that there's some DJs out there that don't mind if strangers DM them asking them for guest lists. I know of this culture more because of Bergheim. Because I'm obsessed with Bergheim and I love that club and I've been there so often and I fucking talk about it too much and I'm always fucking cooming about it in my dreams and I can't wait to play there one day. Because I'm always talking about that place, I know of DJs always complaining on their Instagram stories or seeing on Reddits and forums and stuff or people talking about, oh, I reached out to so-and-so DJ to get me on the guest list because the new lineup for Bergheim every month, if I'm not mistaken, the new Bergheim lineup always pops up on their website on like in between the dates of like the 4th and the 10th of the month. So on the 4th and the 10th of June, you'll see the lineup for July and so forth and so forth and so forth. So a lot of people use that as a chance to kind of like jump on and ask a DJ on there to say, hey, can I get a guest list spot? Because obviously Bergheim is known as a hard place to get into. So if you can get a guest list spot to go in there, it increases your chances of getting in. Obviously it doesn't guarantee it because guest list is still... It's just a shorter queue. It doesn't really guarantee you entry, but it's still a good way to get in. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, guess it's also permits you to go in for free, if I'm not mistaken. Personally, for me, if I ever did get a guest list, those type of places, I would still give them money. I think people that get guest lists, it, I, I think in general, people that go out on the cheap are bizarre to me. It's like people that have vacation on the cheap. People that only want to go on a cheap vac. Oh, I've only got like a $100 to spend. Bro, stay your house at home. Stay your house at home. I don't know, drive somewhere, get a bus somewhere, sit down, watch YouTube. You shouldn't be going on holiday with 100 fucking euros to spend. That's fucking insane, in my personal opinion. Same thing that happens with people that go to clubs. Oh, I only have 20 pounds. So then you, so you want to get a guest list to get free. Then you want to pre-drink fucking little beer in a park before you get in there. And then you want to get a free ticket so that you don't have to pay any money. Like, come on, relax. And then you want to fucking ask, you know fucking you want to beg for fucking drugs from people and me the fucking mark that i am right i might look like a hard nut i may look like a fucking gangster i may look like a fucking thug i may look like a bad boy but deep down i'm a fucking big teddy bear and i'm always looking for fucking approval and seeking fucking friendship in the fucking nightclub so if you come up to me asking me for a bump or a pill guess what i'm gonna give you all of them so those type of people i fucking hate right they take advantage of everybody around them and, and they never give anything back so if I ever was to get a guest list in a place like that, I would obviously give the fucking bar people or the ticket guys a tip. Just the ticket money, innit? I got in, here's the ticket money. Fuck it, thank you. Here's 20 euros. But some people don't do that. 
But I've noticed a trend because um, Narcissus isn't the only person. I saw um, FKA2M4A, I think his name is. I forgot how you say his name properly. But I think he put up a post recently that he had to delete. I think the Bergan people reached out. But he put up a post like, hey, guys, I'm playing a Bergan. Can't wait. Um, send me your DM request. Or I think the, I think the, the caption even was something like, oh, I'm playing Bergheim. Um, let me know how badly you want to get in and I'll choose the best one. So basically you had to fucking send in a fucking letter of like, you know, some X Factor, American Idol sub story about, ah, oh, when I was 10, I heard Jeff Mills on the radio. Like you had to send some fucking soliloquy to get him to give you a list. I think that's lame, obviously. But it clearly shows a difference in culture. Nowadays, it seems like DJs don't mind people asking them for guest list. When I was coming up, that was a no-no. Number one, I would never do it. Number one, it's weird to do it when it's like friends, like people that I actually, I consider like seen friends, people that I know, people that do like local parties. That's even a bit weird. But sometimes I just do that because I want to get into a green room and, you know, rack up in fucking peace. It's not really about the fucking getting free. I still pay for my ticket. I just want to get the fucking guesses just so I can go in the back and whatever it may be. And if it's too full, I can go in and chill out and cool and whatever it may be. Um, but a lot of people are hunting for guest lists to kind of go to as many parties as possible for free. And I think that kind of goes against the whole ethos of like dance music and techno music and underground music. You kind of want to support the promoters. You kind of want to support the promoters who are kind of putting on fun, interesting shows, who are booking the most obscure artists or supporting up and coming people. So the best way to support them is to buy loads of drinks and obviously pay for your fucking ticket. Like getting guests all the time isn't really a way to encourage good or isn't a way to sort of like you know motivate and give the promoters a chance to kind of do more parties and shit whatever that happens but i've definitely seen a change nowadays on the scene with a lot of djs posting these sort of things almost as if they're encouraging and they're goading people into asking them because you don't need to put this up online because it's almost as like you're trying to bait people for next time or oh, next time getting early for amina do you know what i mean it's like you need to just not do this at all personally um but i also don't agree with people sending DJs guest list requests anyway. I think it's really lame. I personally think it's the lamest thing in the world. I think it goes against everything that goes into kind of going out. It puts way too much onus and emphasis on the guest list and being like behind the stage and standing behind the DJ and feeling like you're other and you're better than people. No, no, no. The whole thing about partying and being a raver, in my personal opinion, is being on the dance floor, not in the DJ booth, not in the green room, like none of that shit. Actually on the dance floor in the heart of the fucking rave, sweating your fucking balls off, trying to get a bump in between two fucking big Slovakians like fucking shooking you from side to side that's the actual you know the antithesis of raving for me personally I think the other thing is a is an add-on which is fun like it's always fun to kind of pop into a green room and have a bit of a call out but I've been in all of the big club green rooms in the back and you're not missing out on anything you just get some there's just some adults in there in a quiet space doing drugs talking nonsense and you know basically pontificating about how fucking dance music can save the world it's kind of lame to be honest but it's a good place to kind of chill out and obviously put your jacket and coat in somewhere safe where if you're worried about it getting nicked of course but for the most part the main fun and the only place I've had the best times have always been in the fucking dance on the fucking dance floor and guess where second place i also have a lot of fun yes bitch you guessed it in a smoking area even though i don't fucking smoke and sometimes like a fucking loser i might go and buy some menthol cigarettes to feel fucking cool but for the most part the smoking and the dance floor are the best places to connect to meet new people to share fucking new friends or no to share fucking tunes to maybe even meet new friends add people on instagram maybe you'll meet your fucking future partner your future promoter uh, partner maybe your future fucking um what you call it record label executive whatever maybe all those things happen in that little space there but they happen when you're out in mingling with regular civilians with regular everyday people not in the back like like you're one of those industry heads like who gives a fuck about that shit it's a nonsense so i think all this guest list stuff is really lame people need to fucking relax and chill out and i think the djs also need to chill out within kind of slightly encouraging it like this post did i think it's slightly kind of like oh guys like you guys need to stop with the request like it's like you know like you're just too many people are just like falling over themselves to kind of get into your dms which is probably true to be fair because Narcissus is a huge DJ, had a big tune with obviously DJ Heartstrings that's been tearing up the place and just been doing bits anyway in general with the, with, with the sets and stuff. But I just don't really like this approach of like encouraging, semi-encouraging it without really encouraging it. So there were some people online that had obviously different opinions to me on this actual subject. So I'm going to actually read some of these opinions. I won't show them on screen. I don't want to fucking bait anybody up and shit. So I'm just going to read what people have said. Um, some of the responses. One response says this. 
My good mate told me that the minute they're there announced to play at the Bergheim twice a year, they receive thousands. Yes, thousands of DMs from random people with so many stories in order to obtain a guest list. My mother died. My hamster died. It's my birthday. It's my 10 years of my anniversary. I would like to take my sister who has cancer. Oh my God. And of course, many not safe for work reasons. Yo, yo. Imagine how shameless you have to be to DM a DJ in the first place. Lame, lame, lame. I've done it. Lame. It's lame. <laughs> right? Lame. To do it is lame. Then to fucking beg and write like a American Idol, X Factor, you know, mass singer fucking sob story thing that they do in all those fucking things. Like, oh, when I was growing up, it was really hard to be a woman. It was really hard to be black. It was really hard to be disabled. I can't even see. Like all these fucking dumb sob stories, right? And then you're doing that to get guest list spots. Are you dumb? Like, can you imagine? It's actually more commendable to do those sort of sub stories if you were going to get on X Factor on American Idol because legitimately that could change your life. Like, you do a good sub story on there. You talk about how when I was seven years old, my mom used to play John Train in the kitchen when she was making American pies. And then when she had a heart attack, John Train was playing in the background. And that's why I play jazz because I want to honor the legacy of John Train and Robert Johnson and also honor the legacy of my mom. Like, like, that's actually, even though it's fucking lame and pathetic, that actually might get you a record deal. And that might actually change your life and change the life of your fucking family for generations to come. So I get that. But to do it for a guest list at a fucking nightclub where people are getting fisted in the fu- at, the, at the bar, like I saw the first time I went to fucking Bergheim. I was standing at the fucking bar, you know, in, on the main room w- waiting for my fucking, what you call it, for my, um, for my cocktail. And there was a guy next to me, just like, just like, you know, he's doing that with his back. And I turned around, looked at him, and he was moaning, looked down, and there was a guy literally like fisting him and shit. I was like, oh shit, welcome to Bergheim. But it's just a club. You can see that everywhere. You can see that in Bethnal Green. You can see that in Peckham, New Cross, Hackney. You can see it anywhere. Come on, man. Anyway, let's continue. All I can say, knowing my friend for the past eight years, they have had pretty much the same close friends, um, give or take, and significant other permanently on their guest list. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't know that. So people that play at Bergheim, this person's saying, especially regular, because I get twice a year is basically a resident. It's not really, because I think resident counts as like, uh, once it's like bi-monthly right but that's basically a resident to me so this person that plays twice a year in Bergheim basically has the same 10 people on their list and I think the number is 10 that's why I, I think I've heard the same thing too I think the number is 10 that you can have on your guest list so I've read it from somewhere else. Or, maybe, or maybe somebody told me I think actually what's her fucking name um I actually I have to need to big up her I think she's the one that gave me some of the background information about Bergheim uh DJ guest list stuff what's her name again? I think is it Lily is that her name again? I keep, I'm sorry, I'm very really bad with names, so don't take this insultly because she's a fucking lovely girl. Is it, is it um, Lily? Yes, yeah, it. Lily Ackerman. So big up my girl, Lily Ackerman. We just DM'd back, back in the day about some stuff back in there, Burger and shit. So big up Lily Ackerman. She's the one that fucking told me about the whole, like, how much the list, the long list, list is, how far ahead, you know, like, but basically, I think she told me, if I'm not mistaken, that I think you get to know when you're playing a month earlier anyway. That's the thing that people don't realize. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think the DJs find out they're playing at Bergheim a month before. So we see the guests, we see the lineup a month before it happens, but they find out a month before. So by the time you DM them, it's too late. It's too late. It's too late. So it must be fun anyway for DJs to get stories anyway. But the, the other one that's really funny is a not, for, not safe for work reasons. Can you imagine the amount of horrors as fucking black youngster would say. Can you imagine the amount of whores that DM fucking DJs offering them sexual fucking activities in exchange for a guest list spot? What's more pathetic actually? Being a man and begging another man for a guest list spot, which is already very cringe, right? Or being a woman and offering to fucking suck some 47 year old guy's dick, some middle aged man dick because you know you want to guess the spot what's actually worst having to type out the words i will do anything for that and then put the fucking emoji of the wink or the demon time thing smiling or being a, a dude and be like hey man what's up hope you're well like what's actually worse i don't know 
I don't know which one is worse, bro. I think they're both degrading. Because if you're the girl and you offer to suck someone's dick for a guest list, just follow through. If you follow through, even though it's kind of whorish, you know, whatever. We've all done shitty things for... Sh We've all done some stuff we're not proud of. Whatever. But I think there's something as a guy, your dignity and pride and your ego, type in a way, be like, hey, mate, oh, yeah. big fan, <laughs> big fan. You know what I mean? There's something about being a man and doing that that will never sit well with you. I think a woman is kind of understandable, especially if you're hot as well, right? Or you're to the, or you're to the flavor of whoever the person is. Maybe that kind of works out. But if you're a dude and you're just DMing guys, like, bruh, take a look at yourself in the mirror. Like, literally. Look at yourself in the mirror. You should be ashamed. Um, anyway, it continues. It says, I feel generally, unless you know them personally, it's pointless DMing a Bergheim DJ because you're literally one of thousands. And you know what's funny too? I bet you these people that DM Bergheim DJs are the ones that are clout chasery and dumb because I bet you they don't even DM the ones where the lineup isn't good. They only DM the ones where it's a stacked lineup. Like there's a, I don't know, there's a, what should we call it? There's a Sylvester, there's a gay pride one, the CSD one, um, whatever special events. I bet you don't need a DM of that one or the big ones at the end of the month. Oh, DV DVS1 is closing, Renee Wise is opening, Orgazon is playing, blah, blah, blah. Those are the ones that they fucking chase after, the ones that everyone wants to go to, right? Maron is fucking playing, Renee Wise, all these things. Then they're fucking running. It's like, bruh, actually, if you want to do the whole fucking sucking off DJs things, maybe the smart idea is to go for the lineups that aren't that stacked and maybe choose a DJ that's not that well known. Maybe they don't get that many requests. Probably they do. But if you're going to do it, at least use some tactics and, you know, think of something. But when you're a fucking clout chaser, there is no tactics. The only tactics is anyway we continue um they also mentioned since tiktok era the stories have become more outrageous and laughable it's also a bit delusional though to think a dj wouldn't have 10 close friends or business partners they'd rather take than some fan there's some random fan in their dms that is where i disagree this poster i disagree with you there you're saying people are delusional to think that these djs don't have friends i i would say djs are probably the most lonely people in the world I think by nature, the job is very lonely. The job is very socially isolating because of what it requires. It requires you to play what? For the most part, between the, the days of Wednesday to Wednesday, essentially, right? If, if you're a DJ and you actually, you're, you got like more than 100 gigs per year, you're probably playing Wednesday to Wednesday most weeks, which, which requires you to be away for most of the time. You're staying in hotels. You're not really visiting the cities and exploring. You're kind of living out of a fucking carry-on suitcase and shit. Where do you have the chance to meet people and to make friends, have a relationship, hold down a family, kids, even pets, I think. It's probably difficult. If you're a DJ, like, how do you have a dog? What, you have to take it with you all the time. You can't just leave the dog by itself in the flat. You're going to leave it with your fucking parents or your fucking colleagues or your, your friends. That's also a bit, you know, presumptuous and puts a burden on them. And also you lose connection with your pet. Whatever. It's kind of lonely. So I wouldn't be surprised if there actually is less. DJs have the, DJs are the most lowest people and actually need friends. So why not reach out to random fans who actually love you and appreciate you for who you are? Love you as a fucking DJ. They love your fucking lifestyle. They want to be around you. They give you loads of fucking affection. They loads of give you fucking attention. They give you that good dopamine hit. It actually is a good idea to actually have fans, actually, on your guest list. And if you want to be, if you're like an Ibiza thing, actually think about it, right? If you're an Ibiza DJ, I would prefer, if that was me, and again, I wouldn't do it because I'm not an Ibiza DJ, but if I was an Ibiza DJ and I was in that scene, I'd much rather give my guest list out to random fans and have my fans be in a booth with me, giving me good vibes, good energy, being positive, being fucking hype, than have some fucking, you know, some failed Austrian model there with her fucking, you know, um, chopped up fucking, you know, what you call it, half basketball fucking tits doing some shitty fucking hot girl dance there. I don't want that. Dead vibes. I want actual fans. Right? I don't want fucking clout chasers, scenesters, you know, whatever, socialites. I want actual fans. So I get them in a booth. The only only caveat to that is that fans could be a little bit too much, right? They could be a little bit familiar, a little bit too, like, handsy, a little bit too affectionate, right? A little bit too comfy. They start fucking, you know, drinking all your rider to the fucking face. Like, bro, relax, man. Put my Ciroc down. Put my Grey Goose down. Put your phone down and chill. You know what I mean? So you have to police them a little bit. But 
I honestly do think DJs are quite lonely, which is why they put those posts up as a way to kind of get attention, to kind of get feedback, get people to kind of message them. And on the other side of it too, I also think another thing, DJs probably, their friends are probably letdowns because of the flaky, flaky nature of their relationship. So they'll put a friend on the guest list and they won't turn up. So now you're taking up a spot. Because if, if Bergheim has 10, let's say every club has like a limit of the guest list, five to 10 people. You put one person on there, you're almost denying everybody else a chance. And especially if you don't turn up, it's kind of like, bro, do you know what I mean? And it's like, when that guest list is done, it's really hard to kind of, because I've done club nights myself. I put people on guest list before. They usually do them ahead of time. And when the time is, it's like a hard line time because it's annoying to add people on there. Unless you know the bouncers, you can particularly maybe ask them and they can put it on there for the other time. But for the most part, once you've handed it in, you've handed it in. So if you don't turn up for a gig, you kind of fuck over not only the DJ, but you also fuck over other people that could have taken that spot. So maybe if you're a DJ, actually giving this around to people is a better to go back things. Who knows? Either way, I found that response to be hilarious. Let's read through a couple more and I'll move on. The guest this spot, Barter Economy, is the most depressing affair anyway. There's a whole egos and identities, relationships built around it. Sad. Especially in London. I feel like in London, the scene is weird, man. It's almost as if like people... This is what we're going to say. I almost feel like people in London, especially the techno scene, are way more obsessed with being like friends with people than they are about enjoying the music. If that makes sense. Everyone wants to appear like they're in the in group. They're in the cool group. They're going to the cool festivals, the cool parties. Like they're all friends. Like, I I, 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 or maybe that's, maybe that's just my lack of being able to connect to people and be like more open. I kind of go to the rave, just do my own thing and kind of have a good time, a party, have a good time, record my, my fucking audio clips I need to record, do my review and I kind of go to sleep. I'm really looking for like a community. I mean, yes, it's, it's good to be there, but I don't really, you know, whatever. I'll, I'll see you at the next rave. It's not that big of a deal. But I think some people go into it for that or they want to be involved in the industry as well. So there's that kind of thing. Like, okay, I don't want to be a DJ, but I want to be like a booking agent. I want to be a social media manager, all this sort of shit. It's like, eh, not for me. Anyway, continues. Um, Another one says, uh, I reach out to DJs for their G-spot. Ha ha. Good joke there. Another one says, if DJs are asking people online to send them fresh new music, this is a deranged, by the way, take. This is a deranged take. This guy says here, or this person says, if DJs are asking people online to send them fresh new music, then they shouldn't, then sh then why shouldn't random people ask them for guest list? Hear that again. If DJs are asking people online to send them fresh new music, then why shouldn't random people ask them for guest list? If they don't have it, okay, peace out. It's a guest list, not a kidney. How could you try and gaslight at the end when you're asking me for a favor? Like, what the fuck is that? How are you gonna ask me for a favor or be over over friendly, over presumptuous, and then try and gaslight at the end. Okay, oh, well, sorry, not my fault, I asked. It's like, yo, no wonder the DJs leave you on scene. Now I understand why the DJs don't even open people's DMs. People are fucking annoying. You ask me for a guess this, and then because I, I, I say no, you're like, oh, well, chill out. Uh, I'm sorry I asked, it's only a question. It's like, fuck your question and fuck your life. It is, a, to me, it's a kidney. To me, a guess this is a kidney. And I give my kidneys to my family and friends. How about that? Okay, cool. People are weird, innit? Last one. Last one. Last one. Last one. Last one. Um, another person says here, I've seen DJs offer guest list, but usually in cities where they don't live or don't know that many people. Other clubs can be very free with guest list spots, so why not? But Burger is very limited and very coveted. Many DJs have booking agents, managers, promoters, other cities in town who they deal with in real life friends. So most guest list spots are gone before lines are announced. Yeah, true. That I understand. That's actually a good idea. Like a, if, you're, if you're a big DJ, but you're going to a smaller market and, you're not, and, and the turnout isn't going to be that great anyway, why not put give, give your fans? Because that's actually a good way to actually have a loyal fan base. I know there's some DJs out there that look, that's the thing. I know there's some DJs out there that look down on their fans. They look down on the listeners. They look down on the ravers. They just want you to like dance in front of them and go crazy, but they don't want you to communicate with them or speak to them. Like go, get fucked. It's a very one way relationship. Like give me love, give me affection, give me attention, buy my shit on fucking band camp or whatever, you know, whatever it may be, but don't, we're not friends. Don't talk to me. You know what I mean? Don't be familiar. But I think if you actually want to build connections with people, go into a smaller location and then giving out free lists to people will build an uncre a crazy like link. I always say, I share this story all the time, but that one brief half a second interaction I had with Harry Styles in fucking Alibi back in the day, 
I defend that guy to the hill online. Anytime I see someone chatting shit, I'm in a fucking Twitter. No, oh, Harry wouldn't do that. I'm defending him. But just because of that one brief interaction where he said, hey, what's up, man? Nice to meet you. I was like, I'm your fan for life. So if you're a DJ and you go to a small market and you give your spots to like random kids in fucking Bergamo, right? They're going to be your fans for life because you took them to the back room. They got green room passes. They look cool to their friends in their local area. You, they, they, you get picked with them. They get picked. They can put on their socials. It's not that difficult, but you know, DJs and their egos. Um, and that's basically it. So in my opinion, long story short, please do not email DJs for guest lists. Be a fucking normal person. Uh, go pay your ticket, attend the raves, have a good time and go fucking home. Honestly, the fun and the vibes is always on the dance floor. It's not in a green room. It's not on the back. It's not with these guys. The vibes are always on the dance floor. That's where you meet your people. You meet your tribe. You meet your quote unquote community. You might even meet the love of your life in the fucking dance floor or on the way to the toilet going to it. But you don't meet them in the back room of a fucking green room. Everyone there's looking for clout. Everyone there's fucking, you know, social climbing, nonsense, whatever. It's, you know, it's just not the place to be. I think so. The community is built on the fucking dance floor. That's my impression. But again, I could be wrong. I really could be wrong.